tonight's episode is going to be one of our, our longest in the season. We've got quite a bit to talk about, and it's all around the University of Vermont in Burlington. Burlington University of Vermont has another ghost residing on the farm on Spears Street. We also have Burlington University of Vermont Agricultural Department, aka Bittersweet House, has a female ghost in a period dress around late 19th century that appears from time to time. Another for Burlington University is the Center for Counseling and Testing. The former director saw the ghost of Captain Jacobs, a retired seaman who died there in the early part of the 20th century. Also mild poltergeist activity has been reported there as recently as 1992. So we also have on our list here, Center for Cultural Pluralism, aka Allen House has a ghost on the top floor. Though it doesn't manifest visually, a cold presence can follow one around from time to time. Converse Hall is another in Burlington. It is haunted by a former student who committed suicide there. Though never seen, he turns radios on and off and interacts with electrical equipment. The student electrocuted himself in 1998. We also have Coolidge Hall here, which was a dormitory, has a few ghosts throughout, including a male presence that likes to wake up the residents by staring at them. We also have Grass Mount House. It has a history of voices and doors locking and slamming on the second floor when no one is up there. Living and Learning Center, also in the University of Burlington, C, uh, Section C. At UVM, in the Living and Learning Dorm, Section C, there are always strange noises coming from under the stairs that lead into Section B, as if the dead have been lurking amongst us. Millis Hall's dormitory, part of the University of Vermont and Burlington as well, had a female ghost on the second floor during the 97th and 98th year. Redstone Hall, which is also a dormitory at University of Burlington in Vermont, has an intermittent ghost that appears in black in the black back staircase and has been seen to run through walls. He's not fond of female students for some reason pertaining to circumstances of his death and has chased people out of the area on occasion. We also have Simpson Hall, which is also a part of the university. A spirit of a man who stalked a girl followed her dorm, her to her dorm one year. He now resides in Simpson. And late at night, students waking up with a sense that they are being watched. Usually, the room becomes icy cold when it happens, and very rarely, some wake up freezing at night with the feeling that there is someone else in their bed. Ooh, could you imagine? So here's a treat. Just off of Pearl Street in Burlington, they're about a few properties away from the old Trader's Way block on the corner of North Winoski Avenue. There was a house that might escape your notice. But in 1893, this house attracted plenty of attention that it had been discovered that it was a temporary home for America's first serial killer, H.H. H. Holmes which also he attended the University of Vermont in Burlington at the age of 18. He was dissatisfied with the school, though. He thought it was too small for his liking. So after one year of being at the school, he transferred to the University of Michigan. So from 1879 to 1880, he was at the University of Vermont in Burlington. How's that for a fun fact for you? So after H.H. H. Holmes transferred to the University of Michigan, that's where his career as a serial killer really took off. So thanks for listening. If you've had an experience of your own, click the Leave the Voice message link below to be featured on an upcoming episode. Keep your ears and eyes open because you never know if that place is haunted.